Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm Nicole Bakley, and today I am chatting with Natalia Brocchini to get some real talk about starting a business. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you're a pet photographer ready to make more money and start living a life by your design, you've come to the right place. And now, your host, pet photographer, travel addict, chocolate martini connoisseur, Nicole Begley. Hey, everybody. It's Nicole. Welcome back to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I am so excited to have you here. Today, we are going to be doing some real talk about starting a business with Natalia Brocchini. And she is uh, located in the Houston area and is just getting her business started. Thought it would be a great idea to talk to somebody that might be in your shoes, somebody that is doing all the things, getting ready to start their business. She's run into a couple roadblocks. She's been wanting to get this started for a few years, and she's getting um, really ready to get started right around the corner. I also may or may not have forced her to claim a date so that she has a date to work from to get her business off the ground and out into the world because she's so close. And uh, we talk about it on the podcast, but we... um, can get stuck in student mode because it's pretty easy to keep learning and feeling like we're not quite ready. So sometimes you just have to just have to claim a date and do it. So I'm super excited for her new venture. Now, if you are new to this podcast, or even if you've been around for a while, you might be familiar with the Hair of the Dog Academy, which is our membership site that has, oh my gosh, all the content and support that you need to improve your craft and grow your business. If you aren't ready for the Academy or you feel like you just want one or two classes, well, guess what? We also have the Hair of the Dog Academy shop. If you go to shop.hairofthedogacademy.com, and that is where you can purchase some of our Academy courses on their own as a standalone product that you purchase once and you have access to that particular product forever. Guess what? We are having a store introduction sale. You can save 30% off of all of the classes, all of the templates through Thursday evening, November 12th. So for the next two days, you can have some massive savings, not just on one product, but as many as you want. Of course, if you get in there and you say, oh my gosh, I just want all of these products. This all looks fantastic. I want all of these products plus the individualized support from the Academy. Uh, Maybe I can just join the Academy. Well, we can make that happen. Our next open enrollment period isn't until 2021. But if you want to email Liz at support at hairofthedogacademy.com and say, hey, I just looked in the store and I really wish I could get into the academy right now. Well, we could probably make that happen. So let us know. Check it out. Go save 30%. No coupon needed. Uh, You'll see all the savings right there on the products. Um, And in the meantime, enjoy this podcast. Hey, everybody, Nicole here from Hair of the Dog, and I'm here with Natalia Brocchini, and she is a pet photographer down in the Houston, Texas area. Hi, Natalia. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, yay. I'm so excited to have you here. Natalia and I have bonded um, over the interwebs with our love of pay de queijo, pal de queijo. Um, I can't say it properly because I'm not Brazilian. (laughs) Good good enough. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it's basically the best cheesy bread you'll ever eat in your whole entire life. And if you want a taste of pretty legit Pal de queijo, pal de queijo. Uh, my brain doesn't work as well. I just point and say, yes, please. Um, <laughs> you can check out Costco. They have uh, some frozen ones there that actually taste just like Brazil. They're so good. Um, <laughs> so delicious. Uh, so anyway, so welcome to the podcast. Somehow I always joke that I always end up turning the podcast. We talk about food at some point during it. So we got that out of the way early. <laughs> I'm <a> too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, but yeah, so welcome. You're from Houston now, but you're originally from Brazil. How long have you been in the States? Um, first, yeah. we'll start with that. Yeah, sure. Let's start with that. So uh, I, we first come to, came to the States in 2014 to visit my husband's relatives. And that's where everything started because my husband had um, a freelance job opportunity that time. And then fast forward six years later, here we are with a green card and a lot of priceless experiences and now living in Houston, Texas. Nice. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> and then before that, you were down in Rio. And um, did you have your pet photography business down there or is that something that you created just since moving? 
No, not at all. Uh, actually, I'll just go over a little bit of my background so you guys yeah. can understand. So um, everything started in 2018, uh, the pet photography stuff, because that's when I received the green card and I was able to finally work in the U.S. So I've always loved animals, and even though I don't have one now, because and this part is a bit different from the stories that I usually hear. Because everybody started, well, I have a dog and uh, I want to photograph them, try with them and everything. But I don't have one because we love to travel. And because of that, we, we travel for, for big periods of time. Yeah. So um, it's hard to just leave the... But for alone. sure. For understand. Alone. And, you know, I think that I, I had that same challenge when I started. I actually didn't have a dog till when did we get Zoe? 2016. Oh. So I had six years of my business without a dog. We had cats, but um, but no dog because uh-huh. I wasn't ready for that responsibility. And I kept saying that, you know, I have kids that, you know, need help going to the bathroom. I'm not bringing anything else into this house <laughs> that needs help going to the bathroom until the kids are like older. I, get it. <laughs> so, I don't have kids yet, but I understand what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, nobody else needs any assistance of any kind. <laughs> yeah, true. So it definitely is possible, but yeah, you feel like you're the only pet photographer on the planet that doesn't have their own dog. So I totally <laughs> get that (laughs) yeah yeah so uh because I didn't have one I started thinking well how I'm gonna be able to work with what I like that that's what I love animals and my 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 background that it's a I'm a graphic designer I graduated in 2005 and uh since then I've been working as a photo retoucher actually so photography in the beginning wasn't much of my of my thing and, but my husband, he's a graphic designer as well and a photographer. So we were talking about how I was going to be able to, to join everything. And then we came up with this idea about the, the pet photography. Then I started uh, uh, research about it and I found you. I found <laughs> Charlotte Reeves and then my, my mind just blew away. <laughs> so I had no idea it was a thing. It could be like, I could make money with this. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. That's so, awesome. And yeah, the first step actually was not getting the the camera and just looking for clients. I could have done that, but at first I wanted to learn how to deal with the animals, the the dogs especially. So I looked for a job in a dog daycare and I worked there for five months. And that's how I got my experience and and different behaviors and personalities about the dogs, of course. And it was a great idea. Yeah, yeah. It was very did, helpful. did you have dogs growing up at all? Growing up, no, because even though my dad always loved animals and, and me too, but my mom wasn't much into pets. Yeah. So uh, I only had, I had my first dog that is still with my dad in Brazil nowadays. Um, maybe it was 2010, I'd say. So yeah. I didn't grow up, I didn't grow up with, with animals. I had two fish though. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, that's a great idea to go and work for um, a little bit at some place where you get a lot of dog behavior experience, a lot of (laughs) experience looking at the different um, body languages of dogs and seeing how they interact and how you can interact with them. Um, Really, that's just a, a great way to get a basis of dog behavior. So good job with that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, you were very, very helpful. And then uh, after I I thought, well, I, I've worked here enough. I have enough like basic experience to start something. Then I start the, the study part. That's when I, I start to have, uh, going after all the, the free content that's out there because that's all we can do in the beginning. <laughs> right, and right. We, we just, we can, we we just buy some classes and just go from there, learning and learning. Yeah, and, excellent. Yeah, that's when I, I, I dove into the learning process with you guys. That's awesome. I love it. Mm-hmm. So that was 2018 that you started the learning or did you start that a little bit before? No, no, it was 2018. 2018. So okay, perfect. The yeah, the beginning of 2000, the first part of 2018, I was working as the canine coach yep. at the dog daycare. And then the second part, I started uh, studying and learning. And uh, my husband, like I said, he is a photographer as well. And he is like my my assistant as well. So yeah. with his, his full support, I was able to study a little, study a little bit before having to make money of it. Yep. Nice. So, but then uh, life hits and, <laughs> and I had a health problem uh, in the end of 2018. And I had I had to stop everything and just take care of it. And yeah. it went by like another six months until yeah. 
I could go back to yeah. like developing the, the business. But then uh, I had another opportunity. It was not, it was life hitting again, but it was a good opportunity. We were able to go to Europe for some months and live nice. there. Yeah. And I thought, well, I could just let it go because I really need to begin my business because it's been so long that I'm trying. Uh, but it was a very good opportunity. So I thought I could develop a project, a photography volunteer project where I, I the name was What a Dog Day. Because I think like dog equals happiness and like yeah. what a happy day, what a dog day. Oh, I know. love it. Cute. <laughs> yeah. So the, the idea there was to uh, give the dogs in the shelters or cats, the abandoned pets, uh, a very happy day. So I would go to the shelter, offer my time and say, hey, can I, can I get one of your pets? Like he can be the face of the shelter, you know, yeah. and can represent the place. So I'm going to take him or I can spend the day here. We're going to play. I'm not gonna, just going to photograph him, you know. Yeah. I, I wanted to go there and uh, play with him and give him a lot of belly bugs. And, <laughs> and, <this kind laughs> and, of a, great yeah, yeah. and a great day. Yeah, a great day. And, of course, photograph everything. And then the results of the day would be a lot of uh Beautiful photos that I, that I gave to the shelters so they can share with the local community and like just get the word out about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. That's yeah, a great idea. I was able to do that in four different countries, fortunately. That's awesome. How long were you guys over in Europe? Six, uh, seven months. Oh, nice. And then you got to travel around quite a bit when you were there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fantastic. Yeah, and everywhere I had the possibility I look at for shelters and try to to do the project with them because this way I was practicing, always practicing yes. uh, the photography and growing my my study part. Yep. Yeah. No, that's mm -hmm. brilliant. And really, one of the great things about this business too is um, I always like to say that our photography business is a, a lifestyle business, really, that we create to um, you know serve the lifestyle that we want to live. And when things come up that we either have opportunities to travel or as you mentioned like a health issue that we need to take care of. I mean, mm -hmm. it's so nice that we have a business that we're able to basically kind of turn on and to turn off. And even if you're, you know, anxious to build it and to open it, like there's always things you can be working on in the background. You can always be learning. You can always be practicing your craft. You can be starting yeah, to plan the building blocks of your business, even if you're not ready to release it to the world. So yeah, I think that was a great decision and a way to to use that time wisely. Um, yeah, yeah. You just put in two words what I, I went through exactly. Like, I yeah. didn't want to stop everything just because of a health problem or because right. of a... I don't know, of a new opportunity. You can yeah. you can always try to mix things and just yep. go with the flow. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So when did you guys get back from Europe? We got back. Uh, we went to Brazil to see family and friends for a month. Yep. So it, that, that was in December. And then we came back to the USA in March. But gotcha. Oh, right. The, yep. And then it was <laughs> <Yeah>. COVID. <laughs> then COVID <laughs> so came with us. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, I was ready to, that's a funny thing, because once again, for the second or third time, I was ready to start my business finally. Right. And then what happens? COVID happens. So yeah, right. let's, let's stop everything. What can I do now? Am I going to yeah. stop everything again or just wait? Because I it gets frustrating at some point. Oh, and absolutely. You're trying and trying but then yeah. I focus on the business side. So my husband is also help, helping me as a graphic designer to develop the website, all the, the marketing uh, strategies to to the business itself. Yep. And then I'm, I'm now consuming another type of content, like more, I think, your side of the, the content, because mm -hmm. Charlotte helped me like immensely about the, the Photoshop, yeah, the about mm -hmm. yeah, the craft. And of course, you have a lot of content on that, but I, I really love how you talk about business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's very, very helpful. And Heather also. Yeah. I had a great time with Heather too. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so yeah, so uh, you came back and you wanted to get started in March. So what's the status of your business right now? Is it is it ready? Is it open for business? Or are you finishing touches? What's going on? Um, I would say I'm finishing touches because like I say, I, we are working on the website and I, yep. I want to get to have at least the website ready because I think I'm ready. I'm not, let's say, 
<laughs> we never think we're 100 ready and that's one of the challenges that i went through because i yeah. wanted to be 100 ready as a perfectionist and it's hard because like as a perfectionist you're always working hard to to get everything ready but then you get so tired then you can have to fight to not procrastinate mm -hmm. somehow on the other yep. end <laughs> yes yes so, uh yes a hundred percent and you know spoiler alert you're never going to feel like your business is totally done you're never going to feel like it's totally ready you're never going to feel like you're totally ready um so i think one of the hardest things to do is to move out of student mode and get into business owner moving forward mode and we just have to know that okay there's going to be some mistakes that maybe you're going to be made and that's okay because i'll learn from those mistakes and then we can start again with more information and move forward really more quickly once you start getting out there and making the mistakes. So I'm super excited for you to, to start doing that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's a, another funny thing because the first time that I heard the sentence that you just said, like you have to get out of the, the study mode or something like mm -hmm. that yeah. from you. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm learning something from her, but that she wants me to stop studying and just go <laughs> do it. <laughs> but she's right, right? Because I was in a, such a comfort um, zone Study, yes, because I love to study and we love yes. to learn. But some at some point you have to just stop and do it. So I, yeah. I think I'm right there. So uh, I'm not looking for clients exactly because, like I said, I want my my website done first. Yeah. But as soon as we finish that, I'm gonna put my face out there. <laughs> nice. What um what is the minimum viable website that you can have to get that website done and released to the public ASAP? Yeah, that's that's the thing. Uh, I'm aware that I I don't have I can't be too uh, perfectionist with my website as well. So I don't you know. You can always go, update it. You can always yeah, update yeah, it. That's true. I I know. I'm gonna do like the I, I wouldn't say the basic because I can't. <laughs> But the medium, a medium website, so yeah. we can have like, I don't know, four or five uh, sessions with the pricing, well, uh, structure, sorry. <laughs> structure, yeah, uh, pricing structure. structure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, this kind of stuff, because I already have some portfolios, photos that I think I'm good to begin with and Great. just go on from there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Do you have your pricing all situated? Do you know what you're going to do and what you're going to offer and all that? <laughs> Uh, I have an idea of what the, what are the products that I like, and I, yep. I noticed that I, I should offer uh, the products that I'm really passionate about because I mm -hmm. think it's gonna be easier to sell. Because I want to do IPS, I'm not. I don't want to go to the digital files. Yep. Uh, I would like to start IPS right away because of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. uh, it is. Yeah, IPS for those of you guys at home um, that maybe don't know is in-person sales. And yeah, I'm a big believer. I mean, while it is possible to have a profitable business with online sales, I am a big believer that in-person sales not only equates to larger sales for your business, but it also serves our client in a better, more serviceable manner. Like we are, we're giving them a better experience when we're able to help them determine exactly how they want to enjoy their images. And, you know, that doesn't mean that we don't sell digital files unless you don't want to sell digital files. You know, I personally love to have digital files available as an add-on. Yeah. Basically it's as a, a yeah. Or as a bonus when I have my clients have already purchased all the things that I want them to purchase. I'm happy to gift them with certain things. So yeah. So let's, I, <laughs> we're turning this around this little interview and now we're going to turn into a coaching session here where we're going to have a date <laughs> of your public launch and you're going to be um, out there on all of the pet photography world, hair of the dog podcast with a date in mind for your launch. So what, uh, what date do you have in mind that your website will be ready and you'll be actively seeking that first client? Oh my gosh. I wasn't <laughs> you didn't like know. That. Yeah. Uh -huh. You didn't know this is what you were signing up for. Did you? <laughs> no. That's good. That's good. Because that's how you, you, Heather and Charlotte, you just guys, pushed me to do things I wasn't uh, willing to do at first. Like, let's say just an example, I had the, the classes with uh, Heather, the, mm -hmm. the last challenge, and that yeah. was the first time that I, I record records a live. Yeah, recorded a live. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Live. It was not like, like super open, it was only in the group, but it was yep. a good thing for me. <laughs> oh, it's huge. And doing that the first time is, 
Yeah, very it can be very stressful. Yeah, but yeah. You know, and, uh, the the um, the social uh, social media thing it's gonna uh-huh. be hard for me because I'm not like it's not my thing like to just go in the YouTube and just talk to oh, yeah. everybody. And it's like right, right, right. it's completely out of my comfort zone. So I'll, I'll have to work on that. I think. Yeah. Well, but, it's also one of those things. The more that you do it, the easier it gets. Like mm-hmm. I know when I first started doing Facebook Lives and the Hair of the Dog group, it was like, oh, what am I gonna say? I hope. But I don't mess this up. And now it's just like boom, live, whatever. I know I'm gonna mess up here and there. It is what it is. But people yeah, still mm-hmm. people still connect with you and they mm-hmm. want to see you. And it it's it just things become easier. Same thing as you know, uh, practicing your craft. The first couple of times you're shooting a manual, it's hard and you're thinking about mm-hmm. all these things, but then all of a sudden it clicks and then you can start focusing on other things. And you know, same thing with like driving a car. The first time you drive, you're like, oh my gosh, okay, wait, this is the gas and this is the turn signal. And wait, where right. is this? And where are the wipers? Um, but then <laughs> after you get used to it, it's just, yeah. you know, you drove 10 minutes away and you're like, well, I don't remember driving here. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, another, another big challenge that I've been through that I would like to, to point out was uh, yeah. the English. Because, um, yes, yeah, some, not to feel sorry about myself, that's not the point, but it's just that sometimes you just don't realize how difficult it is to, to learn another language. Yep. And I, I can't communicate, but, you know, uh, grammar and uh, yeah. vocabulary. I'm not like totally fluent, so it, it's hard. It, it's a big deal when you're trying to put yourself out there and talking to to people and communicate, especially clients. That's something that I, I always think about because I I'm trying to say the perfect sentence when. <laughs> In the end, you just have to communicate, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, I think you sound great. And your English is certainly better than my Portuguese. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I'm actually trying to learn Italian now. And um, yeah, no, it's hard. And it gets, at least for me too, you get to the point where you're like, I can see the words and I can understand a written sentence. Uh-huh. Um, but to recall it without, you know, in the midst of talking and and you know what you want to say, but you're like, how the heck do I say that I mean that's it's really really hard mm-hmm. but I think a lot of times with that we get so self-conscious about it and we get so in our head of oh my gosh what's this person gonna think but I think back to all the people that I know that are you know learning a second language like you and like my stepbrother's wife whose English is their second language and like mm-hmm. all, all these people that I talk to that English is not their first language like never in a million years have I ever looked at them and been like, oh, I can't believe that they messed that piece of grammar up. <laughs> like, well, I find it like really endearing. Um, my yeah, my one stepbrother's, um, yeah, the, uh, we were at a restaurant and she was like, oh, I want to get, what's it called? Uh, a dog baggy, you know, instead of a doggy bag. And it was uh-huh. just like, it was just so cute. So we're like, oh, dog baggy. That word, that's our new name. Um, but like, I, you know, I, I, I think that we just stress about that so much more than anybody else does because I mm-hmm. truly don't think anyone is looking at someone and, you know, if they're messing up some grammar. I mean, English is my first language and I still mess up the grammar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So don't don't worry about that and make sure yeah. like, just kind of reframe that in your head that that no one's judging you on that. Mm-hmm. And if they are, um, they're certainly not going to be a client that we want anyway. So yeah, that's true. And that uh, it's similar to another kind of judgment that we do when like we have our photos and then we think, well, is the client going to like it? Because <laughs> I, 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 this goes a lot of a lot through my head. When mm-hmm. I imagine like my first IPS or I imagine my yep. first photo session with the first client, and I think, am I, are they going to see value on what I'm showing to them? Do they know how work, how much work I put into it? <laughs> you know? Yeah, right, and right. Some of the questions yeah. go through a, a beginner's head. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. spoiler alert, that goes through everybody's head. <laughs> but another way to reframe that as well is, you know, if you're showing your work on your website and what you created is in line with your work, then they're going to love it because that's what they're expecting. That's what they hired you for. And of course, we all have sessions that don't go as well as we had hoped that aren't our best work, but the clients still love them. And if something goes drastically wrong, you know, we're not 
photographing weddings, so we can fix it. We can reshoot if we need to. But um, I see a lot of photographers rush to offer a reshoot when there's really absolutely no reason that Mm -hmm. they, you know, they've still created beautiful work for their client, but they just felt like it wasn't their best work. And we're just we're just too hard on ourselves about that. You know, I like to to look at it and put it through the is it sellable? Is it sellable matrix? So asking yourselves these questions for is it sellable? Is it in focus? Is the white balance correct? Mm -hmm. And is the exposure correct? Like, oh, those things are there. It's sellable. (laughs) And and we can then improve our craft always, of course. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we get really hard on ourselves on that. Yeah, then it hits the consistency, right? That's something that I always think about, like having, uh, am I going to be able to go there in my first photo session and have a good amount of photos that are worth of a client's gallery? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, am I... Do I have the, the um, how do I say? Am the I variety. Gonna the, the variety? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am yeah. I going to be consistent enough? Consistent yes. enough? Yeah. Yeah. The image is going to be consistent enough. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and again, that comes from the confidence comes from the competence. So the more that you're able to get out and shoot, the more that, um, you know, you're able to feel confident mm-hmm. that wherever you go, you're going to be able to make something work. I definitely recommend if you're going to be shooting in a new location and you're a little bit nervous about it of checking out that location, you know, sometime before the session at that same time of day Mm -hmm. of going there and seeing the light and maybe taking a couple test shots, even with a stuffed animal or your bag or whatever. (laughs) Even for a lot this day. Yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah. So that way, when you show up for the session, you could be like, okay, I got this. I've already been here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I got this idea from you guys again, uh, with the stuff at animal and I've, uh-huh. I've been just going out, uh, trying new, new places, uh, yeah. look at the light, look at the framing, look at all the stuff, the technical stuff with the stuff animal. Yeah. And it's been, it's been really helpful, especially to location scouting. Mm-hmm. So you can like, program what we're going to do uh when the the real session comes yeah and yeah Mm -hmm. it's just so nice to that way you can focus on those other questions that you have of the light and the lens and the composition Mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about dog behavior and keeping the dog's attention and all those things because there's a lot that we have to remember when we when we start actually photographing dogs so it's nice to be able to break those apart yeah that's true yeah if i would if i have to recommend something for another beginners like me it's say get a stuffed animal and go out there because we've been trying to do like with a a dog's friend and they are alive of course but it's all of the problems that can happen they will have at the same time (laughs) and you're not ready for it because you're still learning and then you may 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 find yourself overwhelmed with everything Mm -hmm. you may can i do it yes you can but you need to break apart like the problems like get the the technical problems for a sake of stuff animal and try everything and then when you Mm -hmm. get the part ready then maybe you can go back to photographing the the dog's friends or and the first yes. client, who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you find yourself, because I know I did when I was starting, mm-hmm. feeling like you had to keep moving really fast during the photo session or your client's going to be like, oh, see, she doesn't really know what she's doing because she's not still moving fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. I always think about it. Yeah, I always think about it. That, like they looking at me, does she know what uh-huh. she's doing? Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe she, she has no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Totally understand. Um, I, I went through that too. I think everybody does. So all of you guys that are early in your journey, breathe, just go out <laughs> to your session and breathe. Yeah. And you know, our dogs need a break sometimes too. So I will often in the middle of the session say, okay, hang out here for a second. I'm going to go check out the light over here. And I can just walk over there for a minute and see if I want to shoot over there. You can just take a breath. You can walk over there if you have like, you know, cheat sheet images on your phone or on the back of your camera. So if you want to know what other poses or what other images to try to capture, you can check them out over there where your client's not looking at you. So, you know, nobody is expecting you to be working through your whole session, like at a breakneck pace, never taking a break, except for us. We're the only ones that expect that. So 
Yeah, yeah. So Nicole, if I can ask you, do you when you go to to your session, your client session, do you have like let's say 15 images that you know you're gonna take and then you get creative out of that? Or do you get you you create everything as soon as you get to the place? No, I mean I have a general it's not that I do it the same order. Mm -hmm. But I do have a general like list of shots that I often try to create. And then, of course, the rest is going to depend on our location, the dog's um, comfort level, dog's behavior, how many people or dogs I have for the session, and then what what my client was looking for. Because part of the pre-consultation process, I do have them tell me what some of their favorite images from my website are. I don't want them going to Pinterest and sending me other photographers' work. I want them Mm -hmm. to look at my work and tell me what they love about that so that I can make sure that I create something similar for them. But yeah, like my general kind of workflow though is I try to do group shots first. Like if if the owners are coming and they want to be in images as well, I'll do a kind of traditional, um, everybody looking at the camera shot or two. Mm-hmm. And then I'll try to do the images of the people with the dogs, like try to get all of those done early. So that way, you know, you don't have to worry about your hair anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, they could put on the comfy pair of shoes. It's they, they, they can then kind of relax a little because they know their part of it is over because people, you know, can sometimes get a little bit nervous about being on the other side of the camera. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and then the other shot, the shot that I always do with the dogs first is I try to do the group shot first Mm -hmm. because that's when all of my noises and everything are still the most novel. And I find it's the easiest to get all the dogs in the image at attention and the least likelihood of me having to do any sort of swaps of head swaps and things where I can't get the attention of one of the dogs. Because then when I'm doing the individual images of the dogs a little bit later, I can pull out some different noises and things for them. Yeah, I find I like to get the group stuff done first and then I kind of work through the other things. And, you know, it also depends on our location. Yeah, a lot of times we'll be moving around to some different areas. I mean, still usually walking. We usually just park once and then might walk to a couple locations that are I'd say they're all within a quarter of a mile they're all pretty close Mm -hmm. so you know it just depends where we're going when for kind of where what shots that I might typically do at each of those locations so yeah very interesting yeah I was listening to the podcast this morning Um, I forgot her name but she was talking about the new market that she moved oh yeah Allison Uh Shamrell yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. so she said something about it in the beginning she she would go to three locations in three hours like but then she noticed that it was more productive to to reduce it and like program everything beforehand the location Mm -hmm. and the the shooting them i mean the the photos that you want to capture yep yeah Yeah. absolutely a lot of times and it depends on your working style too i Mm -hmm. tend to work pretty quickly i mean my sessions are usually an hour and a half at the most you know so it just it just depends and there's no right or wrong Mm -hmm. some people like to go to lots of different locations i just go to one Uh, you know there's it's however we want to build our businesses which is which is really just a great thing. But you've never a- answered my question. <laughs> yeah, I know that, that I'm going yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 we're not going to stop this podcast until I get a date from you. <laughs> I promise I'm not running away. I just got into another subject. <laughs> I know, I know. So the, um, the truth is, uh, I don't have a date, but I can promise yeah. that it's going to be as soon as possible. Yeah. Because I don't care whatever hits me this time, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. Put my business out there. I don't care. Nice. Yeah, what I'm are the um, What are the last steps that you need to take care of before you're ready to go? Website, finalized pricing, mm. anything else? It's basically just the side, uh, the sessions of the website because I need yep. like, the text, whatever I'm gonna I'm gonna write there. Because, but yep. I have a, a pretty good idea because uh, all this year is like the the last two years that I've been studying, I've been working on that. So I have a lot of notes of yep. what I want to say, how I'm going to show myself. Um, I've been working with uh, copywriting. I mean, we're not yep. studying about copywriting yep. that I didn't even know exist before 
I dove into it. <laughs> so, yeah, this kind of stuff. I just need to organize the text and um, select the portfolio photos. And yeah. let's put my husband to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like by the end of like November, that. you should be ready to go for December oh, 1st. <laughs> let's see. I hope so. <laughs> so I'm just going to throw that out there as a okay. December 1st target right. date. I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> And I'll okay. let you know. <laughs> okay. Keep me posted. Keep me posted. So um, going through this, mm-hmm. this whole process, what has been, you know, because I, I know it's not all like, you know, puppy dogs and rainbows and sunshine. Yeah. What has been some of the most challenging pieces of of this adventure? Um, talking about everything, like all the... Yeah, of just of building your, getting your business ready to go and this whole pet photography journey. I'd say feeling ready. Yeah. Uh, feeling ready regarding uh, the technique. Like I, I can see my photos came out of the camera the way that I wanted them to be. Like mm-hmm. because because of my photo retouch background, it was kind of easy in the beginning because the first photos, they are a nightmare, right? This, we, right, just, right. We, we hate them all. <laughs> but <laughs> because I had this, this knowledge with Photoshop and Lightroom since the beginning, I was able to save some. And then, oh, I can yeah. fix this focus. I can fix this here and fix this there. But then in some photos, I end up uh, having to work on that for four hours and just one right. photo. And we're like, that's a Frankenstein. It's like 30 layers in the Photoshop. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's <laughs> not viable. That's not possible. So no. yeah. I think uh, getting getting the, the consistency that I was talking about, getting my photos out of the camera as ready as possible. Yep. So I can have. I love. I love the post projection. Don't get me wrong. I love it. That's the one of the best part for me. Right. But I, I also. So you love, don't want to be. Yeah. You don't want to be yeah. spending time doing post production work that could have been done in camera. I yeah, get that. Yeah, you want yeah, to do creative so, post production. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the basics where you can you can work on your photos in the camera, like the, the framing, the focus, yep. the light balance, and all, mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. So this being uh, my biggest challenge that I'm yeah. still working with and uh say yeah that's it and uh, and, um finally get my first client like see how it's gonna be like someone that i don't know not a family not a friend yeah completely stranger that wants to pay me for my work yep yep Mm -hmm. well for the shooting real quick there's really no shortcut in that creating consistency there i mean we just need to take a lot of photos and the faster you take a lot of photos the faster you're going to get through that phase so it sounds like you're well on your way past that phase which is awesome Awesome. <laughs> and then for getting your first clients, do you have a plan for that yet? Uh, not really, but I just uh, signed the membership f- uh, from what's her name? Togs in Business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's gonna help me a lot with the um, with the the, biz- the the marketing photography yep. marketing part. Yeah. Perfect. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely utilize the fact that, you know, you have a new website once it's up and, Mm -hmm. you know, share that with the world. Um, One of my favorite things is in the Academy is um, charitable marketing. So partnering with rescues or charities. It doesn't even have to be a dog rescue. It can be a non-dog charity where you offer sessions to their followers Mm -hmm. and a portion of the session fee gets donated back to the charity. So the charity promotes you. The followers love you because you're helping the charity. You raise money for the charity. You get business. I mean, it's a win-win all the way around. So that's one of my favorites. And you can, gosh, I mean, there's just so many charities to work with there. Um, (laughs) And there's... Sorry. Yeah, no, fine. I'd say there's also just nothing wrong with like having introductory specials too. Like, you know, where your pricing needs to be to be profitable. Uh But you know, the first few clients, it's there's nothing wrong with having introductory pricing and packaging, which is really just to help you gain confidence getting those first clients doing your first few in person sales, but then they still know the value of what they have received. So it's not like they're walking away saying, Hey, I got a great experience. And she was really cheap. Um, You know, they might have gotten a good deal on something that was very valuable, but they at least know the value of yeah, that. That's true. And maybe about the charity part, I could just go on and continue my project. The the volunteer one that I did. Mm, mm-hmm. I have this idea of continuing here. Actually, it started here in Houston. Like the, yeah. how do you say, the first one, it was in Houston yep. and it was very nice. So maybe I can just mix everything and continue the project and put my name out there. 
Awesome. I love it. I love it. That's super fun. Fantastic. So do you have anything to share um, as we wrap up here? Just like if you had one piece of advice for all the photographers out there, pet photographers new on their journey, just getting started and wanting to build their business, uh, what piece of advice would you have for them? I think a good advice is to mix, in my opinion, the study part and the hands-on part. So Mm -hmm. You don't have to do either one or another. If you have time to study and you don't don't have to do that to pay bills, that's fine. That's fantastic. Just go study how many time you want. But at some point, just go out there and, and start everything because I got caught in the study part because I, I could fortunately, but at some point you just have to go out there. So just go out there, shoot, 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 practice, and then have your first client and go from there. You're going to yes. do great. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Natalia, thank you so much for being here with us. And that was a great piece of advice for everyone. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I mean, the the more, the faster you can get your hands doing things, the faster you're going to move forward from there because... Um, You know, we can study all day long, but until we actually put it into practice, we don't get the feedback to know if we're on the right track or if we need to tweak things. Um, And then we're able to, to build our dream business faster, the more that we just get out there and do it. So I'm looking forward And I'm looking forward to hearing on December 1st. So I'm going to put it on my calendar and I might just be emailing you and checking in um, to see where we are. (laughs) I want to thank you so much for the opportunity. And yeah, I'm just going to keep following you guys. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) I love it. That's perfect. Go ahead before we leave though and tell everyone where they can find you and follow your journey online once that website's up. Yeah, for now, I'm on just on Instagram and it's Natalia Brocchini. I'm sure I can spell it here, but it's easier yeah. if we just put down there. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, so for now, I'm in Instagram, but soon I'm going to have my, my website and all the social media ready. So it's going to be under Natalia Brocchini Pet Photography for sure. Perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks so much for being here with us. And it was great to revisit some of the, gosh, the universal challenges we all yeah. have when we are um, early in this little pet photography business journey. and. Thanks so much for sharing them with us. Absolutely. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hair of the Dog podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please take a minute to leave a review. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. One last thing. If you are ready to dive into more resources, head over to our website at www.hairofthedogacademy.com. Thanks for being a part of this pet photography community.